Yeah, hello YouTube. What you see right here is of course the Mac Pro 3.1 on the operating table. Well, sort of at least. Because we're going to do some upgrades today. And no, the drill on the right hand side is not part of the equation, but that does not matter for now. If we move over a little bit, you can see uh, some stuff over there. Obviously a video card, some RAM modules and a PCI card that we will be adding to the Mac Pro. So uh, the upgrades we're going to do today are of course the video card first. That is the ATI Radeon 5870. Let me get that real quick. There we go. It is absolutely a beast of a card, as you can see. I still think this is one of the best uh, reference designs ATI ever did. Of course, it's still an ATI Radeon. This is the 5870, nice backplate here, all metal, very big GPU. Of course, these racing exhausts here. <laughs> what they're supposed to look like but of course these are more uh, intakes or whatever but of course not really either because it is a blower style card so it sucks in the air right here directs it out the back and it doesn't recirculate all the heat in the case like many uh, modern cards do these days blower designs are not all that common anymore but they're very efficient in servers and quiet workstations where uh, the rest of the airflow is actually very very good because uh, all these cards need then is just to get some fresh air and they'll direct all the air out the back of the case. So yeah, two six pins. I've got uh, all the proper cables for this Mac Pro to set that up. So that's no problem at all. So let's start by opening up the case. Of course, very simple. One-handed job on these Mac Pros. Put that down. And take a look at the inside. Obviously, these machines are built in a way that you can barely see what is going on, so I'll do it like so. Just put the graphics card back here. Of course, first of all, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, we need to unplug the PCI Express connector from the existing video card. It's a very tough one. This is, of course, the NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GT. 512 megabytes of GDDR3 memory. Our 5070 card has a gigabyte of GDDR5. It is considerably faster, but it also uses a bit more power, obviously. So let's unlatch in the back here. Should pop right out. And it does. So here is the original graphics card to this Mac Pro. A single slot card. When's the last time you've seen one of those? It's been a good few years. I know there's been like a GTX 1070 with like one fan, or this uh, single slot design, the GTX 1070 Katana, I think by KFA2, in other parts of the world known as Galax. So, yeah, so that's the 8800 GT. Another very exciting card, by any stretch of the imagination. But for its time, it was quite powerful. So let's see if we can uh, get this behemoth to go in. All right, after some kajiggering, the card is now in. It was actually uh, quite a bit tougher than it's supposed to be. But uh, I just needed to realign everything. Go in for a second try. <laughs> We've all been there, right? And. Uh, that has worked just fine. So now we just need to connect power. You might notice I have an extra six pin here. That's because this is a third party cable. I do have official cables, but I just cannot be arsed for the life of me to uh, reach back in there to replace it with an original cable. As you can see here, I have a full set. These came with the 5870, so that's a nice touch. These are the official as you can see here, mini 6-pin to uh, full PCI Express 6-pin. These machines have a 900-something watt power supply, so they're definitely capable of handling this GPU. The CPU is near only 90 watts as well, or 80 even. So that should be fine. Okay, so that's the graphics card done. 
Now we can focus on other things. The graphics card, as, as said, hasn't been tested already, so I know it works. So let's move on to the next subject here. So this is one of those cards where you just have a direct SATA port on the board. Right now, as you can see, it is screwed in here on the back. You just slide into the SATA port here, and uh, you plug this into the PCI Express slot. There's another SATA port here at the back you can use for another device, like a CD-ROM drive or whatever, or a DVD drive in this case, and uh, that should be fine. As you probably know, the 2008 Mac Pro is the last model to actually still use IDE optical drives, so there is no use in uh, putting a SATA cable for that. What I will need to do is use the X16 slot for now. It's just easier. And because this is a blower card, this does not interfere with the airflow whatsoever. Let me just put that in like so. Keep that slot closed for now. There is still a USB 3 card on the way. I'm expecting that soon, but I figured this was a good moment to just start working on it. So you can get some upgrades done because this beast deserves some more content, I think. I think most of you will agree. And now let's get this pesky thing screwed back into place. Like so. And that kind of concludes that part. What we need to do now is move on to memory. I'm just gonna set those loose a little bit and get to new modules. Gorgeous socks and sandals approach, full lightness mode. Got a couple of modules here, four of them in fact. These are all four gigabytes, so this is a total of 16 gigs. I will first try adding this to the existing memory so we can move it up to 20 gigs, just because it's possible really. Should be fine. these risers out. Put the modules aside, open them up, line up the notches like so. In theory this config should work because the layout of the modules isn't changing at all. The existing one should form one quad channel set up and this one should complement that and this should go back in like so pull this one out do the same thing here this machine will take up to 64 gigs of ram if you buy 8 gigabyte ddr2 fully buffered dims these are a bit expensive but uh, it can take 64 gigs a more common approach would be to move it up to uh, 32 gigs. These four gigabyte modules, I bought them from China for five bucks a pop. So basically this was 20 bucks for 16 gigs. And uh, if you get some more modules, damn this thing is dusty. You can move it up to 32 gigs for like 40, 50 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. All right, let's get these. Wise words. Let's get these slot covers out of the way. Same as last words, right? And I got the cover back on. And just like with the hood of your car, just drop it into place and lock it. And uh, let's get it set back up and see if she still posts. All right, moment of truth. Turning on. Watching in the camera LED. And it posts. Good. Let's see if she wants to boot. The memory I put in is slower than uh, this machine is rated for. This machine is rated for PC2 6400F and I put in 5300F because it was quite a bit cheaper and the uh, difference is really negligible so 5300F 50, was just way more common. 
I also downgraded the OS in the meantime. Lovely background, by the way. I need to change that. I downgraded it to High Sierra because the 5870 is also not properly supported by uh, Mojave. So if we ever want to go Mojave or Catalina on this, I do plan on doing that at some point. Right. Uh, we'll uh, definitely give that a shot. Well, but I need to get another video card, look at something like an RX 570 or something. That should do fine. So, a couple things. First of all, we have upgraded memory, at least. But we have 12 gigs for some reason. So I guess my assumption wasn't quite correct. Okay, so two to four gigabyte modules on the second riser are not detected. But the rest of it is working. We do have our 5870 detected properly. It's also displaying properly. So, so far, so good. Uh, let's take a look at the storage. Uh, I want to go to SATA actually. Here's our Kingston SSD. I need to enable trim on that. It says generic HCI controller with 6 gigabit per second. So that's good. So we've got 6 gigabit per second support now. Uh, let's see here, what kind of speeds we're getting through this car. That's honestly just about what you'd get with the onboard SATA controller, to be fair. So that's not all that amazing. All right. It's not that big a deal though. Because I've got something else cooking. And that's this solution right here. I'm going to check this out very soon. This is an M.2 to PCI Express converter. This thing will take M key cards, so that's NVMe as well as AHCI drives. I will not be putting in like a high end AHCI uh, PCI Express SSD, like what was it again, the Samsung P951? Those are very expensive to get still. Uh, also, the SSD that's in here is a placeholder, this one's actually dead. But uh, we're putting in a SATA uh, M.2 SSD in this, because it'll also be able to boot from it. And because NVMe is not supported at all, and uh, HCI PCI Express SSDs are very rare. But anyway, that's pretty good so far. So at least the majority of our upgrades is now working properly. What I will do is try and reseat that memory because it is quite obvious that those are just not detected properly, so either they're completely dead, which I doubt, or they're just not connected properly. I'll also do, uh, do some rearranging and kajiggering if we can figure it out. And uh, we'll pick it up from there. All right, so the Mac Pro is booting down there. In fact, it is logging in at the moment. As you can see, there are no LEDs lit up at the moment. On the bottom riser card, there were two LEDs lit, which means there was a problem with one of the memory modules, or at least two of them. So, uh, yeah. I just uh, put some air through the slots, put the modules back in, and uh, everything should be hunky dory. Let's see if it is. Oh, yeah. Take a look at, uh, come on, piece of crap. Zoom you down. There we go. Oh yeah, 20 gigabytes of 667 megahertz DDR2 fully buffered DIMMs on our Mac Pro early 2008. Very nice. So that upgrade was a success also. The only thing that was only really a partial success was, well, not this thing, but the other SATA card. I've seen some very good results with those, and I somehow doubt it is actually the card's fault. It might just be this that is SSD is not that fast. It is a DRAM-less, very cheap uh, 
bottom of the barrel Kingston A400. So these SSDs are not designed to be very fast, but I was expecting a little bit more out of it, to be fair. They're doing a great job in my server, for instance, so... Well, not great, but better than hardware's anyway, by a great margin. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely wondering. So, I shown this card, you know, like a little bit ago. Uh, I will be putting an SSD in this, that is from uh, Intel. I've got a 545S on order from Amazon. It was heavily discounted because it's reasonably old SSD, but it was still new. It was 20 bucks for 128 gigs, so... And it has DRAM cache, so it should be a little bit better than the, than the SSD that's in there now. Uh, we'll see. And then this A400 will be relegated to be a data disk from that point onward. So I guess that concludes the upgrade video part one for this Mac Pro. Once the USB card and the other SSD are in, we'll definitely take a look at that so we can finish the build off for, for that moment. Maybe in the future, like I said, I will upgrade the video card to something that will support metal properly so we can move on to uh, Mojave and Catalina. But uh, for now, honestly, High Sierra is fine. It's still being updated by Apple, so that's good. It's plenty fast, it has a great app support, so I don't think uh, this will be a problem for the next few years. It is the next El Capitan, basically, and El Capitan is still very well supported by most apps, so I think we'll be fine. So yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.